we start off with a developing story out of Washington and a big warning for investors who think more government spending is a total slam dunk. Kayla Tashi kicks us off tonight. Kayla. Well, Melissa, just this afternoon, President-elect Joe Biden unveiled the final round of his cabinet picks. Officials focused on small business, labor and economic issues. But he also pulled back some of the covers on his forthcoming COVID relief proposal. He said he would be unveiling it next week and it would include unemployment insurance, rent forbearance, vaccine funding and possibly $10,000 in student debt cancellation per person. The package, he said, would be comprehensive and the price tag would be high. It is necessary to spend the money now. The answer is yes, it will be in the trillions of dollars, the entire package. But it will be, I'll be here next Thursday laying out in detail how that package is going to go. But the basic story is simple, that if we don't act now, things are going to get much worse and harder to get out of the hole. Now, one element of that package is expected to be another round of $2,000 checks for individuals, which Biden said earlier this week would be a given if the two Democratic candidates in Georgia won their Senate runoffs. They did, and that proposal has since gotten backing from leadership in Congress, but it might run into some pushback from another influential Democrat. That is West Virginia's Joe Manchin, who has considerable sway uh, within the Senate and was an architect of the previous bipartisan stimulus proposal. Now, earlier today, he told The Washington Post absolutely not would he support another round of direct checks, but his office tried to inject some nuance into that later today, saying that he would evaluate any proposal as it came and that he would be undecided uh, on any specific proposal until he actually saw what it looked like, noting that vaccines are his number one uh, priority at this point. So he is one to watch, certainly on the Hill. And just this afternoon, uh, the incoming press secretary for the administration said that $2,000 checks still remain a priority for the administration, Melissa. All right, Kayla, thank you. Kayla Tausche, and this news comes as Wall Street sets another round of records. All three major averages closing at all-time highs. But could this reality check out of Washington torpedo some of the most crowded trades on the street? We're talking lower dollar and higher yields. And, of course, a constellation of trades that revolve all around uh, lower dollar and higher yields. Guy Adami, we have, uh, it's almost a foregone conclusion that there will be additional stimulus, that there will be additional fiscal spending. And here we are. We haven't even approached, uh, you know, Biden's proposal yet. And we're getting pushback. Yeah, and I'm sure Steve Grasso has views on this. And welcome back, Steve. Um, I, I don't think this, there are a lot of things that can torpedo this market. I don't think this is it. I think, not that I'm some political genius, but, you know, Joe Manchin is saying, you know what, I'm a Democrat but don't think you have my vote. And, I'm, and he's flexing his political muscles, and he's done it before, and he's doing it again. And he's showing the world in a lot of ways that, you know, there are a lot of powerful people in Washington. He happens to be one of them, by the way, given the way the Senate is structured. So I don't think this is why you should be concerned about the market. They'll ramp something through. And to your question, I think the dollar will continue to go lower, and I think rates will continue to go higher. And the trades that we've talked about, and we're going to mention it in a second, uh, those resource trades will continue to work. What is interesting about Manchin in particular, Seagrass, and I know you know this well, is that uh, he comes from a state which is very conservative. Uh, it was a big Trump win the last election as well as the election before. And so he may be reflecting the views of some of his constituents, if not his broader party at this point. Um, I don't know how you parse it because it seemed like he, his spokesperson backpedaled a little bit when Kayla called the office for follow-up on the Washington Post comments. But he said absolutely not to the Washington Post. And he also said that he didn't know what additional stimulus checks would get us in terms of getting people back their jobs. Yeah, so, so I think uh, you touched on a bunch of things there. I, you know, Guy had mentioned that he's a very powerful person the way the Senate lines up right now. That is true. That's correct. But what Joe Manchin always does is look for cover. And what I mean by that is he's looking to see if there are Republicans that are going to be voting for this stimulus plan so that he can go back to his state and say, I'm fiscally responsible and I'm not just throwing everything out and everything at this in a reckless manner. Having said that, originally when the value play started, Melissa, they talked about 10 trillion in spending. I think that we're going to see numbers. Obviously, we're not talking about 
10 trillion in this stimulus package, but I believe that there's enough Republicans that will vote for this package to give Joe Manchin the cover that he needs. Plus he's worried about vaccine. He's worried about all of the check the box issues. We are going to see an unbelievable amount of spending. We haven't had a sniff, a mm -hmm. whiff of inflation in 10 years. You're gonna to start to get that. If you look at the 10 year on a percentage basis, 10 years up 110% since August. We are going to see inflation that we could only dream of. That's why value is going to outperform. Yeah, so, so basically so far, Grasso and Guy say that this is all just a political game, which I totally buy, Brian Kelly. Um, but how do you see this panning out? And I ask you in particular because you're the only person, the only trader on this Fast Money panel uh, broadly who, who questioned stimulus and who questioned uh, Congress's ability to get any stimulus through throughout the fall. And you were right. I, I, well, thank you. I was right, but the market kept going up. I mean, yeah. we had a little bit of a, a blip, but the market kept going up. And I think what was going on is this anticipation. So let's look six months out. Are we going to have some political wrangling? Absolutely. This is, we, know, we already know this. It's going to be nothing like what we saw over the last four years, I don't think. And I don't think the market thinks that. This is how the so-called sausage is made. But anybody who thinks that there's not going to be massive spending coming is just not paying attention. So, I, I, you know, I, I actually, you know, when Joe Manchin clarified that, I think he made some interesting points. He's saying, listen, you know, let's focus on the things that are going to get us back to work. Let's focus on getting the vaccine. That's going to open up the country again, rather than just sending somebody a $2,000 check. That's very different than saying we're not spending any money. It's saying spend the money in the right place. And I think that's the political message. That's why, I mean, the market had a blip on it, yeah. but really it didn't, it didn't really impact it because I think the market's saying, hey, six months from now, we're going to have a lot of spending. So let's assume that we do have a lot of spending, that we do get stimulus checks in some form, whether they're a little bit smaller or more targeted in terms of who receives them, Kate. Does that mean rally on for some of these trades that have gone higher on the back of higher yields and a lower dollar? Rally on materials, rally on banks, which, by the way, for the week, is up t they're up 10 percent, Kate. You know, Melissa, I think I'm with BK on this one. Six months down the line, what's going to matter is do we have a vaccine rollout? People need to go back to work. They got to go back to restaurants. They got to we got to get this economy going. So I am not that concerned about this issue. I, I think the most important thing is to get the vaccine going so we can get the economy moving. And I and if we can do that, then these trades are going to continue to work. Is that the way you are positioning yourself? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Guy Adami, banks keep going. They keep running. Resource trade keeps keeps running. All that. Retail. Resource, resource trade definitely. Yeah, the resource trade is going to continue to work. We haven't wavered on that for a long time. This is, we're not talking in a vacuum here. This has been something we've talked about. Tim's talked about it when he's on for months, if not longer. So that works. Banks. You know, we outlined why banks work, and we did it in the form of a math problem. And I think you have, I think you have J.P. Morgan a week from today. I think banks continue to rally into that earnings report, and we'll see what happens. I think the prudent thing to do, by the way, given the run, is to stay with a lot of these names into that J.P. Morgan release and then maybe take some profits ahead of it. That makes sense. Um, but again, if you're looking for the metric, in my opinion, it comes in the form of price to tangible book. That's the only thing you need to look at when they release earnings next week into the following week. Do the Mansion comments, Steve Gross, will give you any pause about some of the quote unquote blue wave trades that have been ripping even prior to the Georgia elections? We're talking about green energy, for instance, like EVs, um, infrastructure plays. Zero. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Joe Manchin is a, a, a very, um, uh, professional politician and he knows how to play his state. He knows how to play the circles that he's in. I think that you're going to see massive spend in alternative energy. I think you're going to see massive spend across the board. There's not a lot of uh, rain that's going to be pulled in on the spending um, area. And, and, and for the most part, Melissa, inflation is the key. You have to be a buyer of the banks. Rates are moving higher. We haven't seen this environment 
in such a long time. I don't think people are going to understand how to react to it. And if you look at where we've come from since the summer, the value trade where the banks are at the epicenter of that has taken the market by storm and people aren't really sure what to make of it, which means that it's going to go a lot further than people think. Brian Kelly, I know you like to be a contrarian oftentimes. Being a contrarian today mm -hmm. would yes. mean positioning yourself for a stronger dollar and for lower yields. Is that in you yes. at all well, or no? I mean, certainly, I'm all, I'll am i tell you where, yes, I'm always looking for the bus that I can't see, right? You always get hit. You never get hit by the bus you can see, so I'm always looking for the one you can't see. Here's where I think the contrarian play is. I think banks are okay for now. I like Morgan Stanley in the financials because they've got the wealth management arm. However, I think as the 10-year approaches 2%, and we're far away from that, I think the Fed actually caps rates at 2%, which I think is going to limit banks' earnings power. So that is where I, the contrarian play comes in, is a yield cap at 2%. Hmm. Uh, Kate, you're a little bit contrarian in that you think that maybe it's time to start looking out of banks. Correct, Melissa. I think the banks have gotten a little long in the tooth. You may recall that I pitched PNC back in November, see how well that stock has done. I think the banks, uh, you got to be selective. The easy money has been made. I think the banks do work, but valuation matters. So that, that's my problem with the banks here. I, I think going into next week, I would be looking for an orderly exit out of this bank. Just think about it. Think about potentially lightning positions, being selective. Uh, easy money has been made. Are you still in PNC? I am. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.